Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Distinct Herbicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Corn School. Today we're going to talk about corn rootworm, manure, and soybeans. Why? Well, with growing resistance to corn rootworm traits in Ontario, many farmers who grow continuous corn uh, will be looking to expand rotations to include soybeans. But what about manure? You know, for many continuous corn growers, uh, that crop uh, is an important home for the manure. What options do growers have? Uh, Can you spread manure on soybeans? To answer these questions and more, I'm joined by OMAFRA Manure Management Specialist, Christine Brown. Hi, Christine. Uh, Thanks for dropping by. Hi, Bern. Always happy to talk to you. Hey, great. Hey, let's uh, let's kick this off with a simple question. Why do we typically apply our manure to corn rather than soybeans? Is it it simply, you know, it's a legume crop uh, that, uh, you know, soybeans can fix their own nitrogen? That's that's a big part of it. Uh, the other part of it is that soybeans have a root structure that's a little bit more of a tap root, so they don't respond to the nutrients the same way that corn does. Corn has has nutrient needs, especially nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium that far more closely re- um, are the same as what manure is providing. No. You maintain that applying manure on soybeans is very doable and and a solid strategy. Um, There are benefits and challenges. Let's talk about the benefits. Um, Obviously, manure brings both nutrients and organic matter, uh, two things that uh, soybeans can certainly use. Yeah, definitely. So the the challenge with the, the nutrients is the first one is you're not making the most economic use of the nitrogen. And so that's from an economic perspective of application and just the logistics of manure. uh, That's a bit of a a challenge. But the benefits, um, especially the potassium, soybeans, they use a lot of potassium for stock strength. And so when we talk about some of the challenges around manure being um, that lodging can be a bigger issue, that potassium really does help to – to, to benefit the soybean crop. And then the other one is the organic matter. And that organic matter is feeding the microorganisms in the soil. It really depends on what kind of, of manure you're using and what the composition is. But that organic matter is helping to, to benefit the soil and, and ultimately hold, hold more water, provide the nutrient cycling, and, and some of those important factors that all crops need. Mm. Now, what about challenges, Christine? When, when you get high fertility in, in high-yield environments, that, that sounds like white mold to me. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that and lodging, and they, they really go together. But you never see white mold in a poor soybean crop. It's always in those, those lush, really well-growing um, fields. And, and so where you've got manure, you've got that fertility, you've got the, hopefully the water holding capacity. And so you've got all the things in place that help uh, have a nice, thick, lush crop. And so those are going to be the areas that are most prone to to white mold and to lodging. Uh, so that that's a big challenge. And then the other challenge is as you add manure more often, um, as fertility levels increase, which we often see in fields that get regular regular manure applications, um, then the the risk for for some of that nutrient movement, both through runoff and through tile, increases. For sure, for sure. Hey, um, but you say manure can work on soybeans if you follow some best management practices. Let's talk about a few. Um, first step for you is a, is a manure analysis. Yeah. De- uh, regardless of where manure is going, a manure analysis is, is really important because it's really hard to know what the right application rate or what the right frequency is if we don't know how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much potassium, and even how much sulfur and and um, pH and all those other things that that, that manure contains. And there's such a, a large variation even within livestock types based on on soil tests in the field, based on feed, based on on all kinds of factors. So th- that's the important place to start. For sure, for for sure. And you say it's it's obviously also important to watch the amount of available nitrogen. Yeah, um, nitrogen is important. And um, because soybeans will provide their own nitrogen through through the uh, nodulation, um, soybeans don't need the nitrogen from manure. Having said that, 
they will utilize that nitrogen. But if we put on too much nitrogen, then it has the tendency to interfere with that nodulation. And so if that nitrogen runs out, uh, generally we don't see that the nodules aren't there. But with too much nitrogen, that can happen. And then, of course, that nitrogen also contributes to, to lodging. Hmm. And yet you also have to be careful about your soybean variety choice as well, right? Yeah, there's, um, there's quite a few varieties that have um, a difference in height, difference in amount of branching. And so our goal with soybean varieties where manure is going to be applied is to choose one that has good ratings um, so that they don't lodge. And that have a tolerance, there's none that have a resistance, but that have a tolerance to white mold. Um, it's also important to try and get as much airflow through the population. So so probably 15-inch uh, rows will give you better air movement than 7-inch rows. Um, and then the other thing is with the with the uh, soybean varieties, looking at the population range that the the um, seed dealers recommend for a specific area or for a specific soil type and where manure is going to be applied, generally staying closer to the low end of that population because we do get a a little bit more branching and uh, where there's good fertility, most of the time every seed or most of the seeds will will germinate. Hmm. Hey, uh, Christine, some great insights and uh, you've got more on managing manure on soybeans in your uh, Latest article on field crop news. I encourage everybody to check that out for some more details. And uh, just want to say thanks, Christine, for stopping by. Uh, uh, Lots to talk about this winter, and hopefully we'll see you in a field in 2021. Hopefully. (laughs) Thanks, Bern. Have Have a great day. Thank you. 